This is eHobbyist Blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. During this video, we will continue work on the AC power component and install an illuminated power switch and some of the associated wiring. Looking at the AC power component circuit diagram, we have the AC power input module consisting of uh, input three-pronged socket and a half-amp fuse. The AC power cord has on one end a standard three-pronged plug and on the other end a socket that fits into the AC power input module. I'm now going to add a single pole, single throw illuminated switch. The black hotline is being switched. When the switch is closed, current flows through a neon lamp into a current limiting resistor and through the neutral line drawn in this diagram is gray. The green input ground will be connected to the enclosure. Looking at the panel diagram, I'm going to have to drill out a rectangle to accommodate the power switch. I'm going to do this by drilling three holes as close to the edges of the rectangle as I can get. Get rid of most of the material and then be filing the remainder of the material to shape a rectangle. Now what I'm doing here is removing the AC power input module. The switch is going to be installed just above that and there's going to be all kinds of drilling and filing and so forth. I don't want this module damaged. So we take it apart again. I'm building this incrementally, and so there's a lot of this teardown stuff. This magnetic tray is uh, quite useful in keeping things in place. Now I have a, a template that I'm taping down to the top panel, and this time it's relatively simple, just a rectangle that's going to be used to press fit the power switch. using an automatic center punch to punch the centers of the three holes used to drill out most of the material. Now I'm going to use an X-Acto knife to scratch the outline of the rectangle required by the power switch. In this case, I have to be fairly close to this rectangle. There's not too much uh, room for error, which for me is a big problem, because the, the switch has a very narrow lip on top to cover my blunders, and it needs to be fairly close top and bottom, otherwise the press fit won't press. And there we have the outline of the rectangle and the holes to be drilled. I'm using the universal bit to drill out these holes. And this time no pilot holes. Let's see if I have any better luck. Hey, I apparently remember to use some cutting oil before I started drilling. Uh, it doesn't look good, that second hole in the middle. But what can you do? It is what it is. Uh, I'll just keep doing this until I get as close as I can to the edges of the rectangle. The more I can drill out here, the less I have to file out. Now I'm using the uh, flat file. This time the rectangle is large enough and I can use the uh, full 12 inch flat file. This is time consuming and I'm not going to come anywhere close to showing this in real time. Now I'm using a 12 inch triangular file. 
The rectangle here is just big enough to allow me to do this. I want to flatten out the sides. And I want to make sure I don't go over the marks. And now we've got the bottom fairly well flattened out. Top needs to be flattened out and squared off in the corners. Test fit of the power switch. Press fit it in. And uh, lo and behold, it just fits. That's, that's pretty good. Yeah, it's a nice tight fit. Now I can put the AC power supply input module uh, back in. I'm marking in black the hotline connection on the power supply module. I, I don't want to get these mixed up. If you switch the neutral line by mistake, this is a, a, a serious uh, hazard. And since I don't wish to be electrocuted in the future, I'll check and double check this as we go. Now, let me get a, a quick idea of the neutral line and how much wire I need for that. Neutral line is going to go from the input module to the copper colored connector on the power switch through a, a quick disconnect. I'm using these disconnects because I know that I'm going to have to disconnect these things often in the future as various and sundry other components are added to the system. Just crimp this. I'm not too happy about crimping these things. Uh, let me just test the connection here. I've also got a white wire coming out of there, the white being neutral for downstream components. And now we're measuring out the hot line. One leg of the hot line goes from the AC power input module to the power switch, middle of it. And that needs to be crimped. So we're running this connection from the AC power input module to the center connector of the power switch. And now we're going to run the second wire coming out of the power switch and this would go to uh, downstream components and now I'm measuring out the green wire green is ground ground is coming in from the AC power input module and it's going to be rooted at least in two different directions one will be to the chassis ground binding post to establish a chassis ground on the top panel and then on the bottom panel I'm going to root that ground to something else that's appropriate Make sure that both the top and bottom panels are independently uh, grounded. Uh, this is number 16 wire. It's uh, the heaviest green wire I could get my hands on. And now I've got a ring terminal on one end of that uh, ground wire.
And now we're going to solder the ground connection to the ring terminal. And that ring terminal will eventually go to the binding post. Did I remember to put some heat shrink on here to deal with the reduced tension on that ground wire? And yes, I did! Ah, oh, congratulations. I remembered this time. This is just heat shrink using a hot air gun to shrink the tubing, and I'm using some more yellow heat shrink for the neutral wires where I did not have a large insulated disconnect. Now I'm marking the area around the chassis ground binding post. I'm doing that to establish the area that I have to scrape off. I need to get the black paint off there. I want that binding post in a good close connection to the top panel. Now what I've done here, and which I didn't show, but which is obvious looking at the chassis ground binding post area, is that I scraped off the paint from the bottom side of the enclosure uh, so as to allow the chassis ground binding post to come into direct contact with the metal of the top panel. And now I'm reconnecting the chassis ground binding post and tightening it up a bit for now. Having connected the green ground wire to the chassis ground binding post, I'm now going to connect the other wires. Starting with the white wire, the neutral, being connected to the power switch and the input module, the black wire connected, and now the uh, ground connected. Now let me test the connections. Connecting the, the plug to the AC power input mo module, and I'm testing the connection of ground. Okay, and uh, now we're testing uh, the hot line. by George. There's continuity here. And what happens when the switch is, is turned on? In this video, I presented a circuit diagram of the AC power component thus far. I created a template, did the required metal work, and then installed an illuminated single-pole, single-throw power switch. I did some of the associated wiring, connecting the AC input module, the power switch, and the chassis ground binding post. In the next video, we will be installing AC power line filtering and surge protection. If you like this video, and the idea of the channel, click on the YouTube thumbs up icon. If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.